Hey guys, welcome back. Hybrid32494 over here. Today we're going to be taking a short look at my deconstructed Libertone Loop wireless Bluetooth AirPlay speaker. So, uh, very interesting looking design right here. So, this is one of the only speakers where one of its big selling points is this changeable wool, Italian wool cover in the front. So, this one happens to be pepper black. Uh, you can get whatever color you want. Uh, they even have a sticker right here on the box with all the color combinations. Um, so let's take a look at how you would change one of these covers and the speaker design itself. We're also gonna go over some of the specs from the manufacturer's website. So in the back right here, I already used a flathead screwdriver, turned this 90 degrees, and the back cover pretty much released um, the front cover right here, which is kind of on a little rubber band design. It fits into the grooves right here. So we'll just take it off and let's see what we got. So at the bottom here, um, there's a magnet that really allows you to place the controls really nicely, evenly in place. So there's no way you can mess up that. So you just disconnect that, it comes out. So we'll just remove this. Cover feels really nice. Uh, as they claim, it's made out of fine Italian wood. And it does feel to be really nicely made. Kind of like a really nice jacket that you just bought from a pretty high-end store. Um, so I'll just place that on the side. Let's take a look at the speaker itself. So this speaker, according to their website, is rated at 120 watts. Um, it has, let's see right here at the top, let's just take a look at some of the specs. So at the bottom right here, you could see that it has a one four inch woofer, uh, one passive radiator, and two one inch ribbon tweeters. So let's take a look at the actual speaker components. So right here in the middle, I can see this pretty big mid-range speaker. Um, on the sides right here, you have these ribbon tweeters. Now these are very different from most, well, most tweeters I've seen. Usually they happen to be round. On every speaker I own, they're round. But from what I understand is on more high-end speakers, uh, ribbon tweeters do happen to be ribbon tweeters. Um, in terms of sound quality, I did listen to it. Don't really notice anything, um, so maybe it's just me, um, but there we go. So at the back, you could see that the tweeters and some of the ports right here do have a vent in the back, um, so that's good for sound dissipation. And the cover, the hard cover itself doesn't cover it, so when the wool cover is on, um, there is air coming out of here. That sounds pretty good because of that. Um, because really, if you look at the speaker, it's very thin, not much air being moved around. Uh, so that's really one of its negatives. It doesn't really generate much bass. I do happen to like a good amount of bass. Uh, you would think that this large passive radiator on top would, would help out. It does move, but there's really not much coming from it. I mean, maybe the design is just too big and it has a hard time moving. I don't know. But um, the passive radiators I've seen are all, well, on these Bluetooth type speakers rather, you know are kind of like this sound bot, so you can move it in and out. The JBL uses similar tweeters. Almost every single design uses a system like this uh, to create a lot of air that it needs to push around. You know, I really would have liked maybe if they used two of these mid-range speakers. I know there's nowhere to really put it here, but the quality of the sound is um, really, really not as great as I would say some lower end speakers. Um, one of my favorite speakers is the Harman Kardon Onyx uh, studio speaker. It's pretty cheap now, it's been out for a while, but the quality is just phenomenal. It's also battery powered. This one is not battery powered. You do have to plug it in. Um, so you can see around here, you have the port right here on the bottom. Let's plug it into the wall. You have a USB out charge, and you have an auxiliary and a Bluetooth and Wi-Fi button. So you can choose which one you want. Um, only problem I noticed between switching between Bluetooth and Wi-Fi is it takes a while. Uh, so that's not really that great, but you know if you always have it connected to your Wi-Fi system that it is pretty much instantly on um, So there we go. We have the sound controls all the controls right here in the front So this is what the speaker itself looks like without the cover interesting design um, Does it really work that well for this speaker for the sound quality based on it's pretty it's a pretty large speaker uh, It's bigger than this 13 inch MacBook Pro. So, you know in comparison th this is a large speaker um, you know, am I, am I happy with the sound on this one? Not particularly. I, I've actually only listened to it maybe two or three times. I've preferred even this lower power tiny SoundBot speaker here, 
which is similar to the JBL charge compared to this. The reason is uh, more into the base. This one doesn't make enough base for me. Uh, the quality at maybe 50 to 60 percent rather than the sound is pretty. Um, it's okay at 50 to 60, but then after 70 to 80, it just becomes really, really loud. It's as if the, 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 the scale of the volume is somehow uh, magnified exponentially at some point, and it just becomes louder than you expect it to be. And the bass obviously gets drowned out even more, um, and really you lose pretty much all the quality. But you do hear the ribbon tweeters, I gotta say that. So uh, maybe the bass... Well, the mid-range driver here and this passive rate are just, just aren't powerful enough. I don't know. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. This has been the Libertone Loop Wireless Speaker.